What's going on, Keith? Oh, shit, no! What's up? Look who it is. Welcome. Dude, can I, can I even like, give you a fist bump? You got chemicals on you? Uh, let me go throw this in the truck. How about an elbow bump? Up. That works, that works. Dude. Yeah, let me go throw this in the truck, let me go take a walk. Check this out. So huh. right, right here, there's a poison ivy plant growing in the crotch of this silver maple. Oh. A little bird dropped a seed and then there's a pocket of decay and water and it decided to grow. So I've been watching that, the client knows about it, but we're not gonna spray it, we're just gonna let it do its thing. So it's pretty funny though to see that. All right, now we're good. We got Austin Douglas, Ditch the Itch, bro. What's on up, your Keith? job site right now in my neck of the woods. Yes, sir. Gonna go look at some poison ivy and, and see what we've done in the past and hopefully learn some, some ways on how to identify it. I love it, bro. Let's go. You're a certified arborist, bro? I am, yeah. I just yeah. got the certification last September. Because now we're closer to the woods. So in a, in a residential setting, typically poison ivy is gonna grow in the landscape beds, and then along a wooded perimeter, okay? So how it gets here in the first place is a bird eats a seed from a mature poison ivy vine. They fly into a shrub like this, and then they drop a seed, and then it grows up. So right now, we're uh, along a river further back in the woods. All right, so rivers are like super highways for poison ivy. Essentially what happens is a seed grows up along a river bank, that vine grows up a tree, it matures, produces hundreds if not thousands of seeds, drops them on the snowpack, and then the snowpack melts and it washes up on shore and you end up getting a carpet of poison ivy. And also the woods along rivers are generally covered in poison ivy vines. And I'll show you that when we get to it. But here, this is the second year we've been on this property and all of this area going down was filled with poison ivy. Um, so the client at the time, it was just too much for them. So they called us to deal with it. This year, I've already gone through this and, and treated what I could find. There was very minimal poison ivy, actually. And just super quick, talk about how, like, uh, succinctly, how poison ivy, when you get it on it, you what happens when your pets run in it and then come yeah. back in the house, 3 a.m., you're sleeping, kind of itching, <laughs> you don't even know why, bro. Yeah, so, so if you have dogs or cats and they go running in the woods, okay, they can get the oil on their fur. Now, they're not affected by poison ivy oil, which is called the ruchiol, but we are. So if the oil's on their fur and we pet them and we come into contact with it, then we get a poison ivy rash from our pets. So always be aware of that. And I'm sure it's pretty difficult to give a cat a bath. So we're gonna wanna get rid of the poison ivy so you don't have to do that. All right, so in here, we found very little, but I can spot some. If we go back into the woods, we have a little plant right here. Oh. This is poison ivy. And yeah, the, see? The How real, do you identify it? The trick in identifying poison ivy is that every single set of three leaves looks different. So if we look at the notching pattern of the leaves, we can see it's relatively smooth and it has some bumps. Over here, we have less. But then if we look at this leaf down here, we have a large notch or lobe that this one doesn't have. So every single one looks different. Every single plant looks different. Every single set of three leaves looks different. If we look over at this one, right here, this one's relatively smooth. Right, we have one large notch right here, a couple small ones. This doesn't have those large notches like the other one. So they're the, the same one. species, but they still yep. look different? It's it's the pattern of poison ivy. Every single set of three leaves looks yeah. different. Every single one. That's the only way to identify. Most trees, if you look at this maple, yeah. their leaves are symmetrical and yep. they have the same pattern. Same thing with this okay. box elder. Box elder. Yep, yep. everything has a pattern. Yeah. Poison ivy's pattern is that it lacks one. It's super unique. Uh, okay, so so real quick, even in here, can you just point out stuff that's obviously to you? This is not poison ivy. This is not like talk, point out what poison ivy is not that people might mistake. Like even like this, I say others like this is a this is a baby ash tree, and how okay. you know it's a baby ash is that uh, the leaf stems come off the stem at the same point. Mm -hmm. There's only a select few species of trees that have this happen. Um, maples, ashes, dogwoods, and horse chestnuts. They have this 
where the leaves come off the stem at the same point. Poison ivy alternates. So if this was poison ivy, it would have a leaf coming off the stem, it would grow up, and it would shoot out another one. The most common look-alike that we're close so to... So even though it has three leaves, the identifying factor that well, it's not... Well, this, this has three leaflets. Yeah. But if you look at this one, it's got five. Yeah. And so, so you know... off the same plant, you're like, no. No. Immediately. And they're not alternating. And they're not alternating. And it's a, a tree. So I know it's not. <laughs> yeah, and it's a tree. So and it's a tree. This is something that is really close to yeah. uh, a look-alike. This is box elder. Yeah. But if you look at it, its notches are symmetrical. The That's, notches? What do you mean notches? This is a notch or a lobe. So, you have so a notch, this is a, a lobe, notch. this is a notch. Yep. Notch, lobe. Are these little tiny things notches? Yep. What's this? Uh, the tip of the leaf. Tip uh, of the leaf. Yep. But but these are symmetrical. You can see that they have, you follow them and they line up. Okay. So show me where poison ivy is different than that. Okay. Let's look at this plant right here. Let me get a glove on. Let make it easy. You ain't got it. Okay. Okay. So these this two is, in comparison, uh -huh. they're both three leaflets. Yeah. Right. But then this is also attached to this plant. Box elder will always have the same pattern. All yeah. their leaves will have the same pattern, the same notching style, the same amount of notches, they'll be symmetrical. Whereas poison ivy is not. Oh, so the lobes are, what was that called, they're, they're asymmetrical? Asymmetrical, they're different sizes, different quantities. If we look at the center leaf, we see two notches right here. On this side, it's relatively smooth and we just have this kind of protrusion coming out of the leaf. So every single one looks different. So both sides are not perfectly symmetrically matching each other. No. They're different. They're different. And but these are almost identical. Yes. Okay. So th there you go. That's one way to identify it. I like to get uh, kind of deep when I ask questions because the way my my brain works, somebody will be showing me something, everybody else will get it, and I'll still like not get it, and I'll feel dumb, so I'll keep my mouth <laughs> shut. So I'll ask real in-depth questions, and they're oh, do I get it? But yeah, this, this all used to be used to be full of poison ivy, and now it's relatively clean. We maybe found a plant here and a plant there, and all of these plants are just seedlings that have germinated from the vines that were on the property. So as we walk down here, they used to have a large mature vine on these cottonwood trees, and it's since failed and fallen down. Um, that's what this used to be. This right here, this woody stem, this woody stem right here with these hairs. And this is dead, that's been dead for quite some time. Wait, wait, woody stem with hairs? Yes. Where? This? This. What is it, that's old poison ivy? Yes. Oh, so that's like when I see sometimes it's growing up a huge cottonwood tree. Is this a cottonwood or? It's a cottonwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, this is what it looks like. So that's all dead? That's all dead. And then this is an older vine too that's climbed up the tree. So that's a poison ivy vine for sure, yep. right? Yep. And the number one way to tell the vines is through the hairs. So poison ivy has really thin hairs. It's yep. almost like a horse hair that grips on. There's grips. other, yeah. There's other vines out there, but that's the hairs of the dead giveaway. You know, if you look at this this dead vine, these really thin hairs. That's how you know, hundred percent. Mmm. Yeah. Because like uh, some some that get into like tree trimming or or anything, you you you'll see a bunch of vines growing up a tree and be like, oh, that's so. That's no big deal. That's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, bro. And it was like it was a long time ago. We elevated all these trees on a customer's property for two days straight, and I had no idea that it was poison ivy everywhere, and we were broken out with dude. It was horrible. It was bad. It was really bad. But you got you got through it. You got over it. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so back in here, um, you know, this client's property, they have this this beautiful wooded lot that borders a river, and they wanted to be able to go back there. They have a zip line back there. You know, they want their kids to be able to play back there. But it was literally covered in poison ivy. I'll show you what we've done and then what it used to look like. So it's, oh, sweet. It's pretty clean throughout this. This this what you're seeing. This all used to be poison ivy on the ground on both sides. Hey, look at this just landed on you. Oh, he's gone now. He's a wicked looking beetle or something. Okay. He's trying to say something to me, he's landed on me. Maybe I smell like a tree. So we have poison ivy right here. 
Ooh, boost. right here, poison ivy. Yeah, little seedling. Little seedling. I would just be cautious with your, your lanyard. So all of this in here used to be poison ivy. You can kind of see there's a bunch of um, yeah. stems that were once here. And so they walk down their trail and they want to go use their property, but literally you're just walking through nothing but poison ivy. How this used to look. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here you can see kind of the line that we drew in the sand, right? You have all these leaves right here. This whole area was poison ivy. And now there's really nothing. There's a lot of these stems right here that you might be able to see. But what this used to look like was all of this green area right here. And all of that in there is poison ivy. It's a jungle. Wait, of that's poison, poison ivy. ivy right now? When, when you look in here. So you sprayed all this with herbicide to get rid of it? I added some value and treated it. Oh, a you bit just further. sprayed all this? Yeah. That's why there's droplets all over it. Yeah. What, what is that? The herbicide? Yeah. It's a product that's called Garlon 3A. It's a, the active ingredient in it is called triclopyr. It's a selective systemic herbicide. And it's one of the few that's rated to be used in aquatic environments. So for the EPA to say that and do that, it has to be a relatively decent herbicide. They don't let everything be sprayed amongst aquatic environments. So the backpack you had on earlier with the sprayer, you just have to spray the leaves and it dies right away? Yeah, so not right away. What happens is the herbicide is a synthetic plant hormone and the leaves absorb it and basically trigger the plant to grow extremely fast. So fast that the uh, plants cannot sustain itself with food. So it basically starves itself. It grows super fast, but it can't produce enough food to, to sustain the growth. And oh, yeah. interesting. What happens if it gets on your skin? The herbicide? Yeah. Well, you wash it off. You use Dawn dish soap, wash it off. I think the label recommends to wash for 15 to 20 minutes, but you don't do that, right? You wear long sleeve pants, boots, gloves, and you don't let it touch you. So it doesn't even get on your boots? It does get on the boots, but these are rubber boots, so it's not gonna penetrate into my pants and into my feet, and I try and spray below my feet, so. Okay, sweet. So this is all poison this, ivy. This is an ocean of poison ivy. That's everywhere, all and, the way back there too. This, this right here, if you look at these trees, this yeah. cluster of trees, you can see older vines that we've killed. Another way to tell poison ivy and identify it in the form of a vine is that it branches out. Most vines here in Michigan don't branch out. They just grow up a tree and hug it like a sweater. But poison ivy, its Latin name is Toxicodendron radicans. Toxicodendron basically means toxic tree. And so it'll climb up a tree and suffocate and kill a tree, but it also tries to emulate a tree by branching out. And that's also why it's woody. Yeah, if you can't see on camera, there's a big vine and then there's these branches coming out. Yeah. Wow. That, that's been those vines have been seeding this area for probably 20 years 20 years yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so this you sprayed do you ever pull it out yeah we do remove uh, it we do um i typically reserve those for situations that are um high traffic areas or areas where clients intend to work in or anywhere that um you know somebody might work in whether it be a landscaper or whether it be the homeowner or a utility person we want to make sure that they're safe so in certain situations we do remove it but we have to kill it with the herbicide first otherwise if you don't kill the root system with the herbicide the plants will just grow right back mm. yeah last year you uh sent me a picture Watch out. you were uh getting rid of poison ivy growing up the side of a commercial billing building they didn't Did go was... with the quote no no it was, were you it glad was they didn't uh, kind of yeah they uh that was a commercial client. They had a business that I think it was a, a printing business and um, it was just going to be too expensive. I quoted them like 6,500 bucks to remove it off the side of their building. This entire building was just coated in poison ivy vines. It was all up in the electrical and essentially people, you know, in order for me to do my job correctly, we would have to disconnect the electrical and they'd be down for a day and they didn't want to do that. So how this area used to look we can see it right up here. So when we, when I met with the client, we set some guidelines saying, okay, how far do we need to go in here? Because literally this entire woods back to the river is just covered in poison ivy. So we had some natural barriers that we could set. We have some logs that were laying on the ground and the goal was just to make it safe to that point. So we give them some leeway and some breathing room. But if you look at this green area right here. Have you noticed when this dude is talking, 
he's so into what he's doing and he's so passionate put yourself in the in the mindset of the customer the customer is just like butter in your is that the right <laughs> word in your hands or they just melt they just melt in your hand bro because when he talks he's so competent and he leads the way and the customer's like yes yes where do i sign up where do i write the check but imagine if like he was like kind of nervous and he didn't know and he didn't know and he didn't do all his research and he wasn't passionate and he was in it just for the money like it'd be a totally different vibe right 100%. What, what is this this passion um it's like where is this coming from bro it, it comes from helping people it comes from people um a lot of people are terrified of poison ivy you know keith you shared your experience you've had a bad experience i've had poison ivy i'm allergic to poison ivy i know people that have died from poison ivy and so people you know it seems like more and more that we get away from understanding nature and plants we don't know how to identify them we don't know what they are because we're on technology and so we've kind of lost that and so my my passion comes from teaching people nature again essentially and keeping them safe right like i said this, this client they want their kids to be able to run back here and it's a beautiful wooded property like they should be able to but it's it wasn't safe and so if we can make it safe and give their kids the joy of playing in the woods it'll be it'll be a win for everyone so it's dark uh years ago it wasn't that long ago daniel mirval certified arborist who's in my videos up in some links below i i had just found out about you wait no yeah he calls me up he's like there's this this guy austin douglas he he calls it his business it's genius i go what are you talking about he goes it's called ditch the itch <laughs> i'm like he he said he re remediates he gets he fixes poison ivy right He's like, dude, you gotta check this guy out. He's really on to something. And then, ta-da. You know Daniel Mirval? I do. He's a mentor of mine. Thank you to, to you putting him on social media. I actually, I just spoke with him yesterday and I referred a client to him yesterday to cable a birch tree. So it's a, a good relationship. He kind of, he's helped me and steered me in, in directions to do air spade work. I, I mean, watching him do air spade work was the reason, one of the reasons why I became a certified arborist because I just thought arborists just climb trees and cut trees. I had no idea they did other things. So it, it pushed me to get my certification. So and, why might somebody want to take, if they're in the green industry, why, why might they want to take it to the next step and get educated and become certified? In the, what, th what certifications do you have? Uh, I have the ISA, International Society of Arboriculture Certified Arborist Certification. I'm a TCIA plant healthcare technician and a TCIA tree care specialist. These are just things that, that give you a little boost of confidence in what you're doing and your recommendations and how to bid things, what to do. But it also gives a client a lot of confidence knowing that you've gone through these steps to become certified. And so if you can instill more confidence into your clients, you're probably more likely to sell the work. You know, But you do it from an ethical standpoint. All right, so if you grew up dirt poor, and you don't understand the value of things. Like when I was a kid, we didn't hire any landscapers, anybody to do anything or clean our windows or cut our lawn. My we family poor. did not either. Right? Yeah. No, I was playing in a junkyard when I was a kid. So. You too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When I was a kid, I, I literally played. We lived next door to a burnt down crack house, and I was playing it when I was little. It was not. <laughs> we had we had 12, 12 broken down cars in our backyard, and I would be jumping in and out of them, playing in the trunks. Also. That actually stuff. sounds kind of fun. It was as a yeah. kid, yeah, it was. But you know, don't do that anymore. So. All right. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because a, a a person, a customer who like, let's say, educated or non-educated people who make more money that aren't poor, that that live in nice houses and they want to beautify their environments, are willing to invest money. So if you got two landscapers that come onto your property and one is like I don't know and just making stuff up and just wants to make the money but then you got another one who literally can point out all the things and all this real value I'm not talking like hard work value I'm talking about generative knowledge like what he's talking about the customers instantly feel more confident and they're gonna want to spend more money are you noticing this you're making like you crossed the 100k mark when my second year in business second year in business crossed the 100k mark and what what made you do that so fast um i was working at a commercial nursery and i started my business part-time this was during a time when life was very volatile shall we say and i think you all know that from the last few years and uh while i was working at the nursery my phone just kept 
ringing and kept ringing and kept ringing. And I had so much respect for the nursery that I wasn't gonna answer the phone on the clock. So I would wait until break times and lunches and I'd pretty much spend all of that time on the phone. And then I got to thinking, you know, two of these jobs replaces two weeks worth of work. Why am I here? And so the following year, I went full time and I never looked back since. Now, you know, full time and I have a technician and we're looking to hopefully hire another one probably next year. So you just gotta take that leap of faith. If you see the work and if you're confident and if you know you're just gonna grind it, and go up and get it, do it. Don't hesitate. I love it, bro. Yeah, I should have went out and full time my first year, but I had so much respect for the, the nursery. That bro, I thank you so much. I love it, man. Thanks for having me on your show. <laughs> it's All your right. show, man. So where can everybody find you? Yeah, you can find me on uh, Ditch the Itch MI on Instagram, Ditch the Itch Poison Ivy and Mosquito Control Services. You can find us all over Google, Facebook. Um, you can also look up the Poison Ivy Academy. We have courses, whether you are a landscaper and you want to learn how to offer these services, or whether you're a homeowner and you want to learn how to do this yourself, we offer courses for you. Dude, I'll put everything in the links below. Bro, so happy it for you. It was fun, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Peace.